Hi, welcome back to PowerPoint. So last time we looked at the do's and do nots of PowerPoint presentation. So I'm dressed exactly with the sample clothes that I show you as properly, you know, proper attire to teach and to show something with PowerPoint. Okay, well, I'm not always gonna do that because here we're like talking, we're kind of friends, right? Okay, well today we're gonna be talking about how to actually dress the presentation to make it look appropriate. You know, um, in our last PowerPoint session, we talk about the backgrounds and we talk about consistency. One of the things that we looked at was, uh, for example, an image in the background and then putting text on the front and how it will be so terrible because it wouldn't look appropriately, right? You can, you can read. Okay, so today we're gonna look at some color combinations that you should never use in PowerPoint, okay? So in order for me to better um, explain this, I am going to show you slides with those color combinations that you really, really want to avoid, okay? So let's get to that. Okay, this looks terrible, and keep in mind that everything in here is gonna look terrible. Green on red, you do not want to use. Look at that, just, just having that background red is just like hurting my eyes. You don't want to have the opposite. Uh, actually, this looks Christmassy, but no. No, even if it's a Christmas presentation, you don't want to have green in the background and red in the text. Orange and blue. Mm -mm. You know, these are combinations that you should totally avoid. And by the way, allow me to return a little bit Red on green and green on red are terrible for people that are colorblind. They will not be able to see a thing, okay? Now, these ones are not nice for the colorblind as well, but, you know, in some cases, they may be able to actually read this. Now, the blue, orange and blue the other way around, uh-uh, that's a no-no. And look at how bright that blue is. Probably it's hurting your eyes as well. Blue and red, uh-uh. And blue and red this way, either no. So here is the thing, okay? You saw all those red slides? Avoid the red slides altogether. If you wanna put some hints of red here and there, that's okay. But red as, as like that is too much passion, right? It's like huge, don't do that. Black backgrounds and black colors, dark colors are seen as, um, you know, like sad and mourning colors, right? Like, oh, it's so sad. And when you have um, brown colors, they are so serious as well. So you have to find a balance between the colors that you are going to be presenting. Now, one of the most common colors and the colors that are, you know, best suited for presentations is to have a blue background with yellow letters. That is kind of, uh, common knowledge, and if you go looking around, you're gonna see that a lot of people actually tend to do that. Now, others decide that, okay, I'm just, they just go with a white presentation, okay? I personally li like the white presentation, even with, with darker front, you know, white is okay, um, because you will get the contrast, and because many of the pictures that I get, or the illustrations that I get, they have the edges white. So when I put them in white background, the edges kind of blend when there, and it looks like if I had actually cut them and pasted them into PowerPoint. So for me, that's actually a big help, okay? So please, whenever you build and you have different colors in there, I totally suggest that you test your presentation. And this may sound silly because many times you say, well, I am the one that needs to practice. I need to be in front and I need to say what I am going to be saying during the presentation. But it's also very important that you have somebody else look at your presentation. If they cannot see, if they cannot read what you have uh, put in there, then you have to uh, address that issue. And remember, we are not creating a PowerPoint book. We are building a PowerPoint presentation. And a PowerPoint presentation is built out of slides. And each slide should be consistent with the rest of the slides, okay? It will be probably a, an exception when you wanna make a specific point for something that is quite different from everything that you had been speaking about, that you can make a presentation that it's a little, I mean, a slide that it's a little different, just to mark your point. But if you have, again, if you don't have consistency and you have one, um, 
uh, different background and, and font and picture and then another and another and different transitions, you're going to drive everybody crazy and it's not going to work well. Okay? So having said that, let's go ahead and build our first PowerPoint presentation. Let's get to that. Okay, so in here we have open PowerPoint and we have clicked on file. Actually, we did file and new. So we are getting our new PowerPoint presentation. This is the full screen of what you are going to get when you begin in PowerPoint. Okay, so here is one thing. The first thing that we need to have in here is a title slide. A title slide is very important because you need to say what is that you're going to be talking about. Second, you need to give an introduction of yourself. Sometimes the title slide may serve for that. You may have um, the title and then in the subtitle you may add your name and your titles and what qualifies you as a person that is educated in the topic that you're going to be presenting, okay? You can say that you are the, the salesperson for so-and-so, or you are a very smart student in computer science, I see as 100, for example, okay? So that's your introduction. After that, you need to give uh, the audience the topics that you're going to be covering. For example, you can say, oh, the topics that I'm going to be covering are how to use PowerPoint, how to dress when you're doing a presentation, which colors are good, and how to address your audience, for example. So you will have those four things and your conclusions or, you know, a statement, anything that you want to add. But you need to give them in order so that people know what you're going to be talking about. After that, then you put all the stuff for the PowerPoint, right? All in the order that you have previously said. You know, you kind of commit to your order, then you put the stuff in. Last but not least, you should have a summary and or conclusion, right? Because you are going to tell them that you will have that in there. And the very last thing that you need to do, and you should always do, is to have a slide where you say questions, you know, to address questions and to put your contact information in case anybody has questions or they want to contact you later because they are a little shy and they don't want to speak up. Okay? So let's go back to PowerPoint. So in here then, we have the main slide, okay? And every time that you log into PowerPoint, the first thing that you're going to see is the slide, the main slide. So I am going to just type title so that we know that this is a title slide. And in the subtitle, I am going to put Blanca Polo, okay? Now, I could put all the degrees that I have or all the positions that I hold, that's fine, okay? As long as I have a title and I can say, you know, this, or I may want to have a subtitle here, you know, and then my name. Okay, now after that, whenever we're going to insert a new slide, what we're going to do is that we need to move on in here. And you see in the ribbon here, we're going to go into home and we're going to click on new slide. That's going to give me a new slide. You see? Now, there is one thing that I want you to see. And that is that this slide has a different layout from the first slide. This one has a title and subtitle, while this one has a title and content. Okay, so in here, I'm going to type the introduction. And in here, I will have the topics that I will be cover, covering. So I can say, for example, topic one. And if I highlight and I do control C, I copy, control V, I paste. So there are my topics. Okay, so I have topic two, three, and four. Okay, after my topics, then I will have a summary slash conclusion. Okay? And now that I have that, I will create slides for each one of these topics. Okay? So if I, if I want to do that, I will come in here and add more slides. Remember? So now one thing that we are learning here is to create a new slide. So I'm going to add another slide in here. And when I click it in here, I get a brand new slide that I am going to fill up. Okay? So in here then, I have topic one. Now, I have some text in here for my topic one. I will have to create a slide for topic two, 
three and four as well. So because we don't have a lot of time to do all that, I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight this slide, I'm going to do control C, and I'm going to do control V four times, pretending that those are my slides for my four topics, one, two, three, and four. Last but not least, after that, I am going to add a new slide. Now we know where that button is. At the top, right, I'll click and add a new slide, and these will be my conclusions. Okay, again, you know, I have my conclusions right there, and now I have all my slides in here, and I have this, remember, is the normal view. If I wanted to see the slides, the little slides bigger, I could do this. I just went this way and now I have my slides in here. Now, last thing that I wanna add, and I cannot forget about it, is a new slide where I have to actually address if anybody has any questions. Okay? So now I am going to go into the slide sorter view, one of the things that we learned last time, and when I click in there, I can see all my slides, right? In this case, I know that I will have to change topics to be topic two, three, four, conclusions and questions. But if I wanted to change the order, I can just drag them and put them in a different place, and I can change the order of my presentation, okay? So with that, we have covered the main parts of a PowerPoint presentation. Keep that in mind. When you start, you need to inform the people, you know, your audience, what you're gonna be covering, and don't forget that at the end, you always need to tell people, you know, your conclusions, and to ask them if they have any questions.